Hey guys, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about what you should be looking at when you're going to upgrade the hard drive in your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 4 Pro. Now a lot of what, what I'm going to be talking about will be applicable to Xbox One owners. Xbox One owners are actually quite lucky in many regards. Replacing the hard drive in an Xbox One is quite tricky. You know, you need to go around the back and then adjust some things at the front. It's a little bit more technical, but they're quite lucky as well because you can actually upgrade the hard drive and Xbox One simply by adding a USB 3 external hard drive and plugging it in. You can then start storing all your games on it. When you do this to the PlayStation 4, all you can do is, you know, use it as backup and archive like files. You can't actually play games through it. So I don't have an Xbox One at the moment, but, you know, I might get one in the future. And if I do get one, I think what I would do is increase the storage by buying an external hard drive. It just seems like the most practical option for me. Again, you can upgrade it if you want, if you prefer everything to be within the console. But for me, I think that's the most practical option. Now, PlayStation 4 owners can't do that. What we need to do is upgrade the internal hard drive. It's not difficult to do. Sony have made the process very, very easy. Now, the reason that you're going to have to do this is because... Well, there's two reasons. One is because Sony are quite stingy with how much storage they give you in their consoles. And secondly, it is because, well, really this generation of consoles doesn't really give you much choice. You know, when I grew up, I grew up with the Nintendo NES and the SNES and things like that. You would get a game, you'd slot it in the cartridge slot, and you start playing a game seconds later. You know, granted, before that, you know, the Commodore days and Spectrum and all that, you had to load games. But, you know, for cartridges, for consoles, you just plug the game in and you started playing. But that's not what you do. You know, when you come back with a game such as this, and you know, that's Grand Theft Auto Five I got last week. Um, you plug it in, and it needs to download data, and then it needs to install the game. And that takes hours. So, you know, you come in, you want to play the game straight away, but you need to wait a few hours for everything to get installed. The other problem with that, though, is the fact that these games take up a lot of storage. You know, um, I've got the 500 gigabyte model for the, uh, the PS4, the Sony PS4, and although it says 500 gigabytes, because of the way that, you know, manufacturers sell storage space instead of being 1,024, you know, they say 1,000, um, that's why 500 gigabytes isn't actually 500 gigabytes. You throw in the fact that you need to put in the operating system, and your 500 gigabytes is now down to about 407. And these games can take up 40 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, 60 gigabytes for storage, it's quite a lot, um, and before you know it, you need to start deleting games. I had to delete lots and lots of games just to put this on my console. Um, I had to delete No Man's Sky, I had to delete three or four other games I downloaded from the PlayStation Store. Now, Sony do allow you to download these games again, but it's a pain in the ass, and you don't want to have to keep downloading games and installing games all the time. I mean, realistically, you can only store about six or seven or maybe eight big games on your PlayStation. So... What I'm trying to say is, whether you like it or not, eventually you're going to have to upgrade the internal hard drive of your PlayStation 4. Now, if you've not bought a PlayStation 4 yet, you might be looking at get one of the the more exp the larger storage. You know, the one I got was 500 gigabytes. There is a one terabyte model, but really the way they price these systems, unless you're getting a really good bargain on a console, it isn't worth actually going for the the higher storage model. For example, in the UK. The price of the one terabyte model is so much more than the 500 gigabyte model that for the difference in price, you could buy a two gigabyte hard drive, throw it in, you'd have double the storage and a spare 500 gigabyte um, hard drive to use. So I don't think it makes sense to go for the one terabyte model. My advice for Sony PlayStation 4 users would always be buy the cheapest model. Obviously, again, unless you get a bargain, but my advice is to buy the cheapest model and then do the upgrade yourself. Now, thankfully, as I said, the process of upgrading your PlayStation 4 hard drive is very, very easy. All you need is a Phillips screwdriver and your PlayStation 4. So, what you need to do is pry open the little top cover. If you divide the PlayStation into thirds, it's the third at the left-hand side. You need to pull that back. You will then see a PlayStation 4 screw. You unscrew that and then you can pull out the bay. Now, once you've pulled out the bay, you'll see the hard drive inside it, 
and there's four other screws that you can use your Phillips screwdriver on. You remove the screws, but make sure you keep the dampeners in place, and then you can slide the hard drive out. Now, you should be able to see which way the drive goes in. Just take a note of it, though, or you can check this video to see. What you do, though, is you just insert the other hard drive, put the four screws back on, slide it back into your PlayStation 4, put the PlayStation 4 screw back on, and then just attach the top of your PlayStation 4 cover again, and that's it. The process of doing this is very, very simple. I did it myself just to see that the hard drive inside was a Toshiba. And the model I got, I forgot the name here, was Toshiba MQ01 ABD050. Now, this is a stock model. It's 5400 RPM. It's 9.5 millimeters thick. And it's not an expensive one to buy. It's very, very cheap actually. It's a decent drive. But really, all you have to do is get a drive that meets the certain specifications. If you've got a PS4, what you need is a 2.5 inch drive. Um, that's referring to the spindle, not the width. Um, that is 9.5 millimeters or thinner. So 9.5 millimeters is, I think I've run it down here somewhere, 0 0.375 inches roughly. Um, or you can get a 7 millimeter one, that will fit as well. Uh, which is 0.3 inches. Now, if you get one that's a little bit thicker, it's not going to fit. So make sure you don't get a big thick 3.5 inch drive. Um, I've actually got one here. The thicker hard drives, these big, these big boys, that won't fit in your PS4. You need a 2.5 inch drive, one that's 9.5 millimeters thick or uh, less. Now. You've got a few different options, um, well three different options. You can buy a spindle drive, you can buy a hybrid drive, or you can buy a solid state drive. So, the spindle drive is the drive that I'm sure you're all used to. It's the one that's in your PS4 already. It goes at 5400 RPM, and these are the cheap, cheapest option for you. They're also the slowest. If you want to improve performance, you can upgrade to a hybrid drive. Now a hybrid drive is essentially just a spindle drive. But what they've done is add in a small amount of NAND SSD. So they've added a small solid state drive. And what it does, it kind of acts as a cache between the SSD and the hard drive. And it should improve booting times and loading times and things like that. The solid state drive is the most expensive option. That will give you the best speed. But it's very expensive. So most people who upgrade to an SSD don't have a huge amount of storage. For me, the hybrid is... It depends on your situation, and I'll explain this in a, in, a, in, a, in a moment, but I think the hybrid drive in traditional computing and laptops and desktop computers, that's always the option that most people go for. Um, you know, for years we had spindle drives and they're quite slow, but they gave you lots of storage. SSDs come out in the market and they were really, really fast. They, they gave you considerable performance boost, but they gave you very little storage. You know, at a time people were installing like 64 gigabyte SSDs to put their operating system on, that kind of thing. But hybrid drives came out along and they offered good boot times, but they gave you, you know, the stories that you had with spindle drives. Now, the thing is though, there are some limitations that the PS4 give you. So the PS4 uses SATA 2, which is in theory can go up to three gigabytes per second. And the PS4 Pro, I believe supports SATA 3 up to six gigabytes per second. But here's the thing you can't ever get six gigabytes per second. If you've got the original PS4 like I do, if you've got this one, you won't get the six uh, gigabytes per second transfer rate. If you do have the PS4 Pro, you still won't get it. And apparently this is because developers have placed limitations, you know, they need to reserve a lot of that bandwidth for other system resources, so they don't even allocate it. So even if you can put in a really fast drive into your PlayStation 4, it's not going to run at its highest performance as you would get in, for example, a desktop computer or a laptop. So that's something to bear in mind. And when you take all that into consideration and you know other limiting factors, it, it kind of makes you understand why the performance boost isn't as good as you would have thought. So you know if you're talking about a desktop computer, a spindle drive, uh, and a hybrid drive and a solid state drive, you're always going to get increased performance with the more you pay and you get a hybrid drive or a solid state drive. 
but you're not going to see performance boosts as much as you would see in a laptop or, or a computer. And I'll give you some examples of that. Um, this, I've got an article here from Eurogamer. This was in January this year, so these times uh, are based on PS4, like an original PS4, not a PS4 Pro, but I think it does illustrate my point. It's got Bloodborne Central Yarnum. Now, for a stock drive, it's got 30.8 seconds. For a hybrid drive, it's got 23.4. And for an OCZ solid-state drive, an SSD, it's got 16.9. Now, that's a significant boost. You've half the time with the SSD. You've dropped it you know, by 7 seconds or um, with the hybrid drive. But it really does depend on the game. If you look at... There's some other examples here. Now, if you look at Bloodborne, the same game, Return to Hunter's Dream... The stock drive gets 10.7, but you only shave a second and a half off with a hybrid drive down to 9.1 seconds, and the solid state drive drops down to 7.4 seconds. And there's other examples of this as well. You know, Just Cause 3, first mission respawn, 28.9 seconds with a stock drive, 25.4 with a hybrid drive, and then 21.1 with a solid state drive. See, when you're upgrading your hard drive, you're not going to get, as I said, it's not going to give you super, super performance. What it does affect is loading times. You know, so if you're playing your game, it should be as quick as it normally is. It should be the same. The game plays the same in all systems, in all drives. But where it really matters is loading times. So booting times, when menus are loading, when different, you know, scenes are loading in a game, that's when a better, comp a better hard drive will show a performance boost. <coughs> Excuse me. So... With that in mind, just bear that in mind when you're looking at a hard drive because it really puts into perspective what you're actually upgrading. Because I think when you first look at upgrading your hard drive, some people might think, I automatically want to get the fastest option. I want to get an SSD. But it really isn't worth the money, in my opinion. And unless you've got, you know, you've got a lot of money to burn, I don't think an SSD is worth it. Um, it would only be worth it, I guess, if you didn't need a lot of storage. But <clears throat> the premium you pay for this is quite a lot. So to put it in perspective, you can get a 2 terabyte uh, 5400 spindle drive for around $70. Um, and when I say dollars, I mean pounds as well. The dollar and pound rate is about the same just now. You can get a hy hybrid drive for about $30, $40 more, depending on the drive. To get an SSD, you're talking going away up to like $250. You essentially need to spend more money on, uh, in fact, that would be for a one terabyte drive. You'd have to spend more money on a one terabyte drive SSD than the PlayStation costs. To go to a two terabyte drive, you're talking over $500, maybe even $600. There's actually four terabyte drives out there, SSDs as well, and they cost thousands. It's just insane because an SSD, as I said, it's going to give you a performance boost, but it's... It, depending on the game, it's not a huge amount. You know, there's times here that drop from 50 seconds down to 40 seconds with an SSD. Look at this one. Project Cars, 24 hourly mans, 44 cars. Stock drive is 49.6. A Seagate 1 terabyte SSD is, is 48.5. And an SSD is 45.8. So essentially, in a, a 50 second load time, you're shaving off a second for a hybrid drive and five seconds, or four seconds, sorry, for a SSD. And it really puts it in perspective, is it really worth paying all that extra money for an SSD if, you know, you're, you're only getting small amounts of performance boost? For me, it isn't. I think it's a waste of money. And until SSDs come down in price, I don't think it's a sensible option. And it really comes down to the reason. I mean, I'm upgrading the hard drive in my PS4, not because I want a performance boost. I'm happy with the performance, if I'm honest. I'm upgrading because I need more, more storage to, you know, to store games. I didn't like having to download and um, to delete games to, to play this it's what i had to do i've got other games i want to buy and i don't want to have to keep downloading games deleting games downloading them again deleting games downloading games again for me storage is the priority it isn't performance so because of that i think most people should either get a spindle drive or a hybrid drive i think it makes the most sense it's definitely the the the, the most sensible financial option to go now I've been looking at hard drives a lot and you know that's the reason why I'm talking about this in this video. I've been looking at this issue a lot. Um, one of the, the most sensible options that most people have been buying, or, um, the route that most people have been going down the last few years, 
is to buy an external hard drive. Now, there was one from Seagate. It was called the Seagate Backup Plus. Now, one of the reasons that was very popular was the original model had a Samsung spin point drive. Um, the exact model is the spin, M9 T spin point. Now, the actual spin point drive retailed at $100, but the external hard drive like this retailed at 70 So what that meant was you could buy the drive at $70, you could pry it open, you could take out the $100 drive, you could then use that for your hard drive, you can then take the 500 gigabyte drive from your PlayStation and put it into the bay, and that's you got, not only have you upgraded your PlayStation to two terabyte for less money, but you've also got a 500 gigabyte external hard drive. Now, one downside to this is warranty. You know, that drive was a Samsung one, but the one that replaced it with was a Seagate one. Seagate don't have the best rating, I would say. A lot of their drives fail. A lot of their drives, you know, like some of their drives were failing at a rate of 10%, some of them were 5%. I mean, all hard drives, you know, the, the failure rates um, go up and down, but it's for, for a particular brand. But Seagate's rates are pretty, pretty poor. Um, so everyone was buying the Samsung one, you know, the earlier model. But the thing is, you don't get a warranty. And that's something you need to take into consideration. If you buy the more expensive hard drive that's inside and buy it on its own, then you'll be covered so that if it fails, they'll replace it. If you buy the hard drive and then you open it up and then take the hard drive out and then that fails, you know, six months down the line, then you're not covered. Now, you could maybe get away from, uh, from that. I was very, very close to buying it. The only reason I didn't buy it was because they didn't have it in stock. <coughs> Excuse me. I was ready to buy the Seagate Backup Plus, and the Backup Slim, whatever it's called. I was ready to buy that the other day, and the re they didn't have it in stock, but what I was worried about was the warranty, was that if it failed. But the shop I was going to buy from it in, in the UK was Argos, and Argos are really good with returns. I've returned things there in the past because things broke, and they don't even look at it. You know, they, just, they just go, oh, okay, we'll get you a refund or a replacement. But a lot of other... You know, companies aren't like that. They'll inspect it, and I think if you returned a hard drive to you know many other many companies, or returned a hard drive to you know Seagate themselves, I think they'd maybe see that you've tampered with it. Essentially, what happens is they've got the casing and it's it's held together with glue, so you need to pry it open. Now you can put it back together with glue, and it might look okay, but if they saw there was any tampering or they thought that you had. Um, you know, interfered with it anyway. They just wouldn't honour the warranty, and then you'd essentially just lose um, your money. I guess for the price that you you know for saving the money and for the the risk, I think it's perhaps a good gamble. That's perhaps a way to go down. Um, now the newer drives do have a different model inside. It's a better model, and I believe it can still be used. But the one that I went for was another model from Seagate. It's an internal drive and it's called Fire Cuda. Now they've released a couple of different um, options. They've released the Barracuda and the Fire Cuda. The Fire Cuda is, and the Barracuda are gaming drives. They're aimed at people who, are, you know, who want small gaming uh, hard drives. Well, in fact, they've got three and a half inch hard drives as well. But it's aimed towards gamers, you know, and they offer faster performance um, for gamers that are playing through the laptop or through the PlayStation 4. The Barracuda is slightly cheaper. I got the Firecuda, and in the UK it cost me one hundred and twenty pounds. For me, I, I thought this was the best option. It's a hybrid drive, so it's not as fast as an SSD, but it gives me two terabyte of storage, and it was only like fifty percent more expensive than the um, an equivalent a uh, spindle drive. So I was probably going to have to spend seventy pounds or eighty pounds on a regular spindle drive, and I thought to get to get a hybrid drive for 40 pounds more and to you know get a five-year warranty i thought it was worth it you know another thing that I, I didn't talk about earlier was the fact that many of these hard drives have different you know they've got different uh, performance ratings i'm not just talking about you know 5400 versus 7200 or you know hybrid versus spindle i'm talking about the fact that they've got different amounts of cash some of them draw more power than others that kind of thing now, the drive that was in the Toshiba MQ1 ABD50, that was the one that's in my PS4 just now, and that's got, I think it's got 8 megabytes of cache. This Firecuda has got 64 megabytes of cache. Now, they claim that you can get in the game up to five times faster than tra traditional hard drives, so they're saying it boots much quicker. 
I've not seen any tests yet about this, so I'm hoping to do some tests for you guys, or you know, at the very least, talk about my performance and what my experience with with it. I'm not going to see what they claim, no doubt about it. As I said, if you were putting this in a this hard drive into a laptop, I think you would see incredible boot times. But as I said, the PS4, there's many limiting factors, not just the system, but also the way the developers design games, and you know, they have to manage resources and things like that. So. I'm not going to see the performance boost that they claim. But again, in saying that, for me, I thought it was worth a try. It's a good hard drive. It's two terabyte of storage. And I think I'm going to see a huge performance boost. It's actually just released and it's so popular that you actually can't get it just now. So I'm going to have to wait two or three weeks for it. Now, <coughs> the purpose of this video wasn't to say buy this one or buy that one. I wasn't trying to tell you all which hard drive to buy. There's a lot of different options out there and there's a huge amount of articles explaining the pros and cons of each one. I mean, generally speaking, the more you pay, you get a better hard drive. The more you pay, you get more storage and the more you pay, you get, um, well, you can move up from a spindle drive to a hybrid drive to a solid state drive. I honestly, as I say, just to re reiterate this, personally, I'm not trying to influence you guys, but I think unless you've got money to burn, I don't think an SSD is to worth it. Uh, I don't think it's worth it and I think the priority for myself and for most gamers is storage. It's not the performance per se. But I think hybrids do, you know, they maybe sit in the middle as far as they'll improve, you know, boot times compared to the stock drive that's in your PlayStation 4. But, you know, they're not going to be as fast as the SSD. But I think they do sit in the middle and give you, you know, the best all-round performance. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to link to lots of useful articles below. I'm going to link to some articles that give recommendations for hard drives. Now, a lot of these articles, you know, they're just linking the ones that they think will give them the best commissions or whatever, but um, they might point you in the right direction. Um, there's a good article here from Riley.net. He recommends no SSDs. He thinks the best value for money ones. Um, he recommends a few Seagate ones, the Samsung M90 spin point, and a couple of Western digital ones. Um, and the upgrade to the, the, the Toshiba one I've got. And really, that's what, that, I think that's quite a good article. He, he looks at the price points of each one. But again, I'm not trying to influence what you guys are doing. I will link to the articles below in the description area, and I'll link to the article that I was referring to with the boot times. With all this kind of thing, as with, you, as with everything, just do your research, you know. Look at what others are buying, and, and take a lot of things into consideration. Now, as I said, with the, the backup Slim Plus, I was 99% sure that was the route I was going down. And I read one article on Reddit saying there was a lot of people complaining about failure rates. So that did kind of influence me a little bit that if it failed and I, I, it was out of warranty, then I wasn't going to get a replacement. So for me, I think the warranty would be quite good. You know, I still play with my PlayStation 3. It's 10 years old and it's still going strong with the same hard drive. Uh, and that was a replacement hard drive that I put in, you know, increased in storage in that one. So I think it is something to take into consideration as far as, you know, buying one that's going to be reliable and buying one that you're going to get a warranty so if it fails you can replace it. I'll do a tutorial soon guys, I'll show you how the process of um, upgrading your PlayStation 4 hard drive. As I said, I touched upon it earlier, it's very very simple but there is a few things you need to do first as far as backing up your save games and that so stay tuned for that in a few weeks and I will talk about my performance of the Fire Cuda. Check below in the description here, there's lots of information there for you um, so that I can point you in the right direction. And please do leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this, particularly from those of you who have upgraded your hard drive. I'd like to know what drives you've bought, why. And if there's any of you guys out there that have got an SSD, I'd like to hear from you guys as well. You know, I, I, I don't think it's worth it, but I mean, if you've got seen a huge performance upgrade and you think it's worth it, then let me know. Perhaps it is, is helping you in a game somewhere. I'm not sure why. Perhaps, you know, booting in you know, FPS games, you know, and first-person shooters. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope I've helped some of you who are, you know, trying to do research on this issue before you buy a new hard drive for your PlayStation 4. So at the very least, I hope I've pointed you in the right direction. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.